from being a martyr for Christ at the hillock of Katadimalai in a small town in southern India to the glory of sainthood at the heart of the Catholic Church. That is the journey of Saint Devasahayam Pillai, an 18th century Hindu royal official martyred for his ardent faith in Christ. He is among the 10 persons who have been officially raised to the pedestal of sainthood by Pope Francis this morning. Pillai was born on April 23, 1712 as Nilaganda Pillai to Vasudevan Nambudiri and Devagiyamma, then in the Kingdom of Tiruvidamkor, presently in the state of Tamil Nadu, India. As a boy, he learned Tamil and Malayalam, the languages of the people. He also studied Sanskrit, Hindu scriptures and trained in the traditional martial arts, archery and the use of weapons. He became a high official in the palace and married Bhargavi Amal from an equally prominent family. Pillai experienced heavy losses of property and wealth which caused him great worry. He sought counsel from Eustachius Delanoi, a Dutch Catholic military officer who instructed him about the mystery of God's loving providence in affliction the Christian meaning of suffering in the book of Job and the redemptive suffering of Christ. Pillai was impressed by Job's absolute confidence in God in the face of unbearable tragedies. Convinced of the truth of Christian mysteries, he expressed his desire to be baptized, fully aware of the extreme consequences which might befall him. Father Giovanni Battista Buttari, a Jesuit missionary, instructed him for nine months and baptized him on 14th May 1745. At baptism, he received the name Devasahayam, which is a Tamil rendering of the biblical name Lazarus, which means God has helped. Devasahayam Pillai continued his office at the royal palace for four years carrying out his duties with his usual efficiency. His courageous propagation of the faith, leading many to Christ, while performing his high office at the king's palace, angered the upper class. While preaching religion, Deva Sahayim especially emphasized on equality of all people, irrespective of caste differences which triggered a hatred among the upper classes, and he was arrested in 1749. He endured grievous sufferings during his time in prison. Even chained, he led a life of virtues, prayer, penance, and mortification. His lifestyle, coupled with the fame of miracles, helped him convert many hearts to follow Christ and procured for him great veneration. Finally, after three years of gruesome torture, he was taken to a secret prison where contempt criminals were sentenced to death by the king. He had to be killed quickly and secretly because the Catholics began visiting him in large numbers. Finally, a little before the midnight, between 14th and 15th January 1752, he was taken to the place of his execution. He was brought to a small place called Puliur Kurichi, where, overcome by thirst, he planted his elbow on a rock from which spouted water that he drank. It is called Muttidichan Pare, meaning the rock from which water gushed forth. As he was lying totally exhausted, he was carried by the soldiers to the nearby hill called Katadimalai. There, he knelt and prayed intensely. The marks left by his knees and elbows can be seen even today. There, he was shot dead by the soldiers. As five bullets hit him, he uttered for the last time, Jesus, save me. His body was cast away into the forest to be torn up by the wild animals. He died at the age of 40, after having lived seven years as a follower of Christ. 
On the fifth day, his bones were found shorn of flesh and was buried in front of the main altar of the Church of St. Francis Xavier, the present-day cathedral of the Diocese of Kotar. The rock that we see now is called Maniadichan Pare, meaning bell rock. According to the traditions, as he died, a big piece of stone rolled down from the huge rock on the top of this hill, producing the sound of a church bell. This was the miraculous death bell rung by God through nature, proclaiming his martyrdom to the world. It rings like a bell even today. Deva Sahayam paid the price for his faith in Christ, even to the extent of radically renouncing anti-gospel, anti-Christian values like caste system and other dehumanizing evils. The canonization of India's first layman and martyr is important not only for India, but the millions of Christians who suffer in silence for their faith around the world. The others who were canonized today are Saint Cesar de Bus, the France-born founder of the Fathers of Christian Doctrine, Saint Luigi Maria Palazzolo, an Italian priest and founder of the Congregation of the Sisters of the Poor, Saint Giustino Maria Russolillo, an Italian priest who founded the Society of Divine Vocations for Men and the Vocationist Sisters. Saint Anna Maria Rubato, founder of the order now known as the Capuchin Sisters of Mother Rubato. Saint Maria Dominica Mantovani, co-founder and first superior general of the Little Sisters of the Holy Family. Saint Charles de Foucault, a dissolute French soldier who became a Trappist monk and a missionary in the Algerian desert. Saint Titus Brandsma, a Dutch theologian, journalist and author who spoke out against the anti-Jewish laws the Nazis were passing in Germany before World War II. Saint Anne Marie Riviera, the foundress of the Sisters of the Presentation of Mary. Saint Carolina Santo Canale, an Italian nun who established the Capuchin Sisters of the Immaculate of Lourdes. Oh.